I am Anne Bertolotti. I'm a group leader and also joint head of the neurobiology division here at LMB. Right, I did a PhD in Strasbourg studying transcription at IGBMC with Pierre Chambon and Laszlo Tora. After that, I moved to New York uh, for a postdoc with David Ron, and this is where I began my work on uh, misfolded proteins and the cellular response to such proteins. I am interested in the molecular basis of neurodegenerative diseases. Um, turns out that Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's diseases are all very different, but they share a common molecular origin, which is the deposition in, in pro of proteins in abnormal conformation. And so I've been working for the past uh, 20 years or so in um, trying to understand the mechanisms that underlie the deposition of these proteins and trying to find ways uh, to prevent this. Um, an important focus of my research is on uh, protein quality control systems. These are sort of cellular defense mechanisms against these uh, bad proteins that we produce at all times. And so one idea that we've developed in the lab is to try and boost these cellular defense mechanisms to provide ways that can be uh, exploited as uh, therapeutic strategies against these diverse uh, neurodegenerative diseases. My earliest uh, memory of science, I don't know if that can be called science, but perhaps I'll try. Uh, this would be the observation of a snowflake under a microscope as a child. So um, it was a, a toy, the microscope was a toy, obviously. And of course, as soon as the snowflake would hit, hit the, the, the slide, it would melt. And so I had to first um, cool down the microscope on the window seal, and then um, I could observe uh, the snowflakes. And it was truly magnificent. So the way I, I chose the area of, of research I, I work on now. Um, as, as, as many things in, in science was probably not by design, uh, but it followed uh, simply curiosity. And uh, I uh, started working on these defense mechanisms against misfolded proteins as a postdoc, and, and what caught my attention to this uh, line of work was, um, you know, the fact that uh, it was unknown at the time. And so uh, it's really a, a curiosity for the unknown that led me to uh, do some uh, initial work on protein quality control systems. And then it evolved into, if we have defense mechanisms against misfolded proteins, then why do we develop neurodegenerative diseases which are caused by accumulation of bad proteins? The most exciting thing about my research, there isn't one, there are many actually. Um, I think this is what's remarkable about scientific careers is that every day pretty much or every week, every month, there's something really exciting coming up and it's, it's truly addictive actually. And as I explained, answering the question, how did I choose my research area? A lot of it is unpredictable and anticipated. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very exciting and, and yeah, addictive, actually. It's very hard to think about other work, other profession that could bring this level of excitement that science does. We are the first to see the things we see. We are the first to uncover molecular mechanisms that uh, are important for uh, cells and organisms. And, and that's what, that's why I'm a scientist. Oh, this is a really fun question. Has there been an experiment that didn't turn out as planned and, and led to an unpredicted outcome? There are many. And uh, this is um, something we try to think about when we design an experiment is, not to just design the experiment to lead to the answer that we are sort of um, looking for, but design experiments to reveal something important, including things that we cannot anticipate. And uh, I've I'm, I'm, I'm sort of um, spread the idea of, of what I call the killer experiment, which is an, ex an experiment that is designed to kill the hypothesis, 
uh, that one um, uh, that underlie the, the question we we uh, want to ask. And if the killer experiment doesn't kill the idea, then it it usually reveals something interesting that we want to follow up on. Ha! Ah, this is a question about scientific hero, and I don't have one. And I I think um, heroes are characters of, of comic books uh, or, or novels, in my opinion. This isn't to say that I have not been inspired by giants uh, in science. I've been inspired by many scientists in many ways, but I can cite a couple of papers that uh, have impressed me. I can cite uh, scientists that have given very um, remarkable talks and so on, but I don't have one scientific heroes, hero. And, and I think um, maybe there's, there's, there's um, uh, the idea here is, for me, you know, science is, is, is not led by heroes, but by human beings. And we all have flaws. Um, no one is perfect. We all make mistakes. And often in, uh, you know, when um, reporting on, on scientific careers, we always put the highlight on the successes. But often these successes, um, you know, don't come in a linear manner. There's a lot of hurdles and obstacles and bumps on the road. And, and I think, yeah, it's, it's an important point. Uh, science is led by human beings and, and not by heroes, in my opinion. What is special about working at LMB? Many aspects, but one in particular, which is um, that we can do whatever it takes to answer a given scientific problem. And um, this is unusual. I've worked in, in various institutions uh, in, in, in France, uh, two institutions in France and one in the US. and. What is, what is really special here, we can follow our research um, in depth and, and very comprehensively. We can go start with an observation. Our work often starts from a cell biological problem. We start in cells, but then we can go uh, and, and follow the relevance of, of the mechanism to uh, animal model of diseases, but also go down to the molecular uh, basis of the signaling event one studies, the molecules uh, uh, understand their structure and so on. And this is unusual because um, in many um, uh, other uh, labs, often scientists will be restricted by um, the sort of, of, of work they classically do in their own team. And this comes about because they have a, a limited set of equipment uh, that, that uh, they've usually obtained through um, uh, grants. Whilst here, we share equipments uh, uh, amongst, uh, amongst us uh, in the whole of LMB. And, 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 and for this reason, the energy barrier from going from, from one um, uh, scientific area to another is 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 uh, very low relative to other places, and of course the people makes the place very special. We are surrounded by first class scientists, so there's an expert in in virtually everything we would want to study in more depth in our own lab, and and that makes uh, the work uh, that facilitates uh, uh, the work in in many ways. So. There's, there's no limit and no barrier to our thinking, and, and that's huge. I mean, being a scientist with complete uh, freedom to follow our um, questions in depth and breadth is remarkable and a lot of fun. The skills for good scientists, I've been thinking a lot about that, you know, in recruitment or when, when I give uh, mentoring, uh, sessions and, and talks at, at conferences or such. Um, to me, uh, you know, you can name many, many um, uh, qualities that one needs, but the number one is perhaps fearlessness. Being fearless to explore the unexplored, to venture in, in areas when one knows nothing, when nobody has done anything before, is what drives uh, significant discoveries. 
people need to be uninhibited and, and, and be able to try new experiments without the fear of failure. The fear of failure is often what, what restricts people in progressing in, in science, but perhaps in life, but we may not go there today. This is a question about um, the, the benefit of my research to, to science and society and outside of LMB. Um, it wasn't by design, but it turns out that the work I've done as a PhD student and as a postdoc for so my early career, um, you know, was was uh, uh, is now in in textbooks, and and that's uh, something that you know at first I was fascinated by. You know, recruiting somebody from Japan and saying, "Look, this is my Japanese textbook, and here is your name," uh, was a lot of fun. So you know, contributing knowledge um, um, uh, is is important, and you know, the the idea that you know the discoveries we make in the lab. Uh, go to university in a short period of time through textbooks and, and, and such is, uh, is very exciting. Um, I, I, I really get excited when, when I'm invited to student symposia, for example. This notion that, you know, the knowledge goes from the bench to the students in a short uh, amount of time. And of course, you know, there's the idea throughout my career that by studying fundamental biological processes, inevitably, the knowledge we will gain one way or the other will benefit uh, human health. And so there, there is uh, uh, some of our work which has uh, direct relevance to the clinic, uh, a discovery we made in the lab uh, that we published in 2011. 2011, a small molecule that protects itself from protein misfolding insult has been tested in human and has shown uh, benefit in a phase two clinical trial in ALS. There were 18 um, individuals with a form of ALS that has bulbar onset for which the disease did not progress for the six months of, of the clinical trial. And that's immensely rewarding, you know, from um, the bench to, to tangible benefit in human. Of course, it's a small, small number of individuals. It, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing whether uh, this can extend to larger um, uh, uh, clinical uh, groups. But um, this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, for, for me as a scientist, you know, uh, generating knowledge relevant to improving human health and perhaps seeing how this can be used to produce tangible benefit in, is in a human is, is, is tremendously exciting. Is there a part of my job that can surprise people? Um, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna split my answer in, in two. So the people who know me a little bit won't be surprised to hear that part of me being a scientist is having fun. I have tremendous fun in the lab. There's a playfulness aspect to the work we do, the idea of creating experiments. Nobody has done this before. Of course, some things fail, and sometimes we realize the day after, how did we not think about that? This is ridiculous, and you know. Um, so there's fun. Um, those who know me uh, may not be surprised to hear that, and, and those who don't know me may be surprised to hear that uh, you know, part of, of, of scientific careers, in, as far as, as, as I'm concerned, involves fun. Um, the lab is a, is a playground. Um, you know, I, 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 um, I work with really talented people, um, young people, and, and, you know, part of the fun is recruiting um, fun people to join, join the team and, and, and expand on, you know, our, on our playground. My favorite thing to do away from science, um, I, it'd probably be exercising. Um, yeah, it's very important for me to, to keep a balance. Uh, being active uh, is, is, is really an important component of my life. Um, it might be because I now spend quite some time sitting in my office, but also it's a, it's a, it's, it's a way to get some frustrations out and, and you know, feel good and, and be good kind of uh, idea. 
have, I think, a great imagination, but the one thing I did not imagine is my scientific career. Um, because it wasn't planned at all. It happened one step at a time, one day at a time, going forward. And perhaps, perhaps um, this, I might link this to, to the perhaps one and only advice I got uh, from uh, Pierre Chambon, who, with whom I, 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 I did my uh, PhD, who was focused on the science and, and, and forget about the rest. The context of this uh, advice was, you know, after my PhD, um, the job market was pretty dull in France and must have had a conversation about career advice and postdoc, and he was like, just focus on the science. And I thought, this is pretty cool, actually. You know, it just makes the thinking process far simpler because scientifically, I always kind of knew what I wanted to do. And if I didn't know what I would be doing next year, maybe I still don't know, uh, I know that I will uh, figure that out uh, going, going forward. So no long-term strategic planning, just one, one step at a time. This is a, a very good link to the, the previous question. What is the piece of advice I would pass on? I think it's the advice I received, focus on the science. science by and large, uh, this, this helps, you know. If, if one is good at what one, one does, the rest works out by itself, pretty much. And so rather than sp spending energy and trying to plan, it's very difficult. Things change constantly. But the one thing that has been you know, um, constant for years, decades is, you know, good science does pay off, right?